How far can the Tesla Model Y take you on a single charge? Well, I've got the rear-wheel drive model here from Giga Shanghai, the one with the LFP battery, and I'm gonna find out today, at least in part. I picked up this car brand new from Tesla with 22 kilometers on the clock, and it's actually still on its original factory charge. It's done 139 kilometers now, it's used 24 kilowatt hours of total energy, and it's got 59% of charge remaining. So I'm not out there pretending like I'm doing everything completely instrumented. What I've done is something that ordinary people do, which is use their cars in the burbs, commuting to work, and then maybe they wanna go somewhere further afield, which is exactly what I wanna do right now. So I've got 59% battery in my rear wheel drive Tesla Model Y, and we're gonna to go to Goulburn, which is a pretty little town about 190 kilometers south of Sydney, where I'm standing now. Now, we should be fine. We've got about 250 kilometers of range left in the tank. This vehicle is rated for 455 kilometer WLTP range. We're gonna find out exactly what it can really do today. So, we're headed out of Sydney, Southern Cross Drive, about to go past the airport. Uh, 254 kilometers of indicated range in the car this morning, 59% battery. Maybe that's the kind of thing you have after a, a week of commuting in town, and you think, all right, well, that's enough for a, a weekend getaway a trip down from Sydney to Goulburn, use the superchargers at Goulburn, uh, which always work well. So this should be fine, but particularly because Goulburn is 189 Ks away. That being said, we've just plugged the destination into the Google Maps backed navigation in the car, which does sort of talk to the battery and it knows how much charge it will have when it gets to a destination. It's warned us to keep below 90 Ks an hour in order to reach our destination, which Seems unusual. Um, we should be okay to get there just at regular highway speeds, which are 100 and 110 uh, in New South Wales. That being said, we do have the option to bail out at Mittagong where there's a NRMA 50 kilowatt charger if the going looks really bad. But uh, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to drive at the speed limit between here and uh, Goulburn. I think we should make it. I think we'll be pretty low on juice when we get there, maybe under 10%, but for now I'm gonna just proceed as normal because theoretically we should be okay. Um, already a bit of anxiety though, but I'll let you know how we're looking closer to Goulburn. The purpose of this range test isn't to be as scientific as the famous or perhaps infamous EV battery exhaustion video that we did about a year ago on chasing cars. This is really more like just using the car as it would normally be used, which is leaving Sydney for a weekend road trip. And look, Sydney to Goulburn is definitely uphill, so I'm making it difficult for the car. So the point of this is really to set like a minimum. If I can do this kind of road trip range, then you certainly can as well, particularly if your city isn't, I guess, in a coastal valley, because every direction out of Sydney, which is Australia's most populous city, is uphill. Sydney's down by the coast. If you want to go south, then you're going towards Goulburn and the Southern Highlands, towards Canberra and Melbourne. You've got to get up and out of that valley. If you're going west, you have to cross the Blue Mountains. If you're going north to Newcastle and up the coast, you've got to get up and out of that valley in that direction as well. So if you live in Sydney, at least in Australia, you're going to be going uphill to leave the city just like we are today, which is probably why uh, our current trip consumption is 18 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, bang on the speed limit. Aircon is switched on, fan speed is on to 20 degrees, the outside temperature is 15. Uh, so a nice cool day here in Australia. So we don't turn the aircon off on our test cars, we drive them as normal people do and, and rather than kind of going backwards with living standards and running without a heater or without cooling. Um, so yeah, in terms of our trip today to Goulburn, we're still bang on 133 k's of range predicted by the car, 100 kilometers left to go to the Tesla supercharger at Goulburn, 31% left in the battery. Uh, so yeah, still looking okay. That means we'd have about well, just under 20 kilowatt hours of capacity left. Um, so as long as we're averaging kind of 18 to 20 kilowatt hours per 100 k's, we're going to make it. Of course, this car's WLTP consumption is a lot lower than that. So what I will do in this video is I'll also give you our consumption going back to Sydney, downhill, and then the average of the two of those. It'll be interesting to see where that falls. But yeah, still looking good for this leg to Goulburn. 
In terms of being a highway cruiser, there's a lot to like about the Model Y. The seats are comfortable, the driving position is good, you've got a really good view forward. I think it's a little bit better than the Model 3 in that regard. You just sit a bit higher. Um, of course, that's a personal thing. Um, for sportier, driving a lower seating position is good, but for this kind of work, just cruising on the highway, the Model Y is really well suited. There's also a lot to do in the technology package. You've got Spotify, premium uh, infotainment. I think it's worth that $9.99 a month subscription. The satellite view on the maps is cool. And of course you can troll through all your data about your consumption and energy efficiency as you go. The stereo is also excellent. The Model Y is fitted with Tesla's premium sound system as standard in Australia. Unlike the base model, Model 3, the rear drive Model Y gets the proper stereo and it sounds really good. However, on the bad side of the ledger, just as I said in my review of this car, the ride is really terse. Um, and on the highway where you're on the broken up sections, the concrete sections like we're on now, you just feel the bumps way too much in this car and you hear them too. And that's a shame because we've got double glazed windows, which means there's not much wind noise and road noise, but you hear a lot of suspension noise because of course that's coming from beneath us, not from out there. And so the fact that it's quite a bumpy suspension is compounded by the fact that it's also quite noisy and loud throughout the car. Now station wagon and SUV bodies typically do get a bit noisier inside than sedans because the back is open to the cabin, whereas in a sedan there's a, a wall between the boot and the rest of the cabin. So the Model Y is a bit louder and a bit more off-putting in terms of that suspension noise than the Model 3. It's definitely not as comfortable through the suspension as the Model 3, but even that car doesn't really set a benchmark for ride quality in the segment. Um, so certainly kind of these SUV, coupe SUV type EVs, something like a Kia EV6 has better ride comfort than this car. Okay, so slightly surprisingly, this range test is actually turning into something a little bit exciting. Um, Eddie, one of our snappers and I kind of left the chasing cars office in Sydney this morning thinking, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get to Goulburn, we'll go a bit further, we'll go around in circles for a bit, basically exhaust the battery and, you know, have a nice day out basically. But in actual fact, we're, <laughs> we're running it a bit tighter than we thought we might. So we've got 10% of battery left, so that should be about six kilowatt hours usable. We've got another 38 kilometers to go to the superchargers at Goulburn. And from Sydney, in order to just make it, to scrape into the superchargers at Goulburn, we had to average 18.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers and we're doing 18.3. So it's a bit of a close run thing. And every time we go up a hill, that goes up to you know 18.6.7. Every time we come back, it's down to 18.3. So yeah, just seeing how we go at this point. We do have one safety charger, which is the Charge Fox Ultra Rapid installation at the north point of Goulburn. That's 31 Ks away but the Tesla superchargers I want to get to, they're 37 Ks away. So we've really got to be quite economical. So we've reduced the speed from 110 to 108. The Tesla's saying stay below 105 to reach your destination. Uh, Maths brain says that uh, 108 should be fine. Uh, still got our AC on, we're still comfy. Um, you know, not ready to heat up too much. Uh, but yeah, let's see how we go. <laughs> Hopefully we make it. I don't want to have to get onto a tow truck. I swear, I'm like triggered right now. This takes me right back to uh, <laughs> our EV exhaustion test where I drove the Model 3 508Ks uh, in total on one charge. So the Model Y, that was a long range by the way, the Model Y rear wheel drive has now done, it's now done 310Ks since I picked it up from Tesla on its original charge. 17.7 kilowatt hours per 100 k's in that time and then today on this kind of informal range test i've done 165 k's at 18.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers the problem is got five percent left in the battery four percent sorry it just changed predicted 19 k's of range left but the Goldberg supercharger is 20 k's i don't know man should i risk it for the biscuit Charge Fox is 13 kilometers away. The superchargers are 19 Ks away and we've got predicted range of 19 Ks. I really don't know what to do. 
just coming off the highway, Sydney Road, Goulburn. This is the way we would have had to have gone anyway, heading for the superchargers. We've got 1% battery. Interestingly, the car isn't yelling at us. Uh, it's been saying charging required to reach destination for like the last five minutes, but that's it, nothing else. 1% battery, three Ks of range, six Ks to the superchargers, or I can go in two Ks to charge Fox Goulburn down here. Of course, hoping that those charges are actually working. Not quite at uh, charge Fox Goulburn, but that's where we're gonna have to stop. We are at zero Ks of range, 0% in the battery. Uh, could go a bit further to the superchargers, but you know, zero kind of means zero. We know that from the Model 3, it will go further. No idea how much further this one will go though. And this time around, I don't have my tow truck behind me. So I'm going to do the right thing, pull in and get some juice uh, here at uh, Charge Fox, and then we'll go down to the superchargers. Uh, in a minute and I'll give you some data in just a second. Okay, yes, so we did bail out for a quick rescue charge here at Charge Box Goldman. The chargers are working today, which is really good to see. And these are the 350 kilowatt ones. Um, they're pretty good. And in fact, the Model Y went straight up to 170 kilowatts, which is the maximum DC charging speed for the rear wheel drive very, very quickly. So if you're in big trouble like us and had zero Ks of range left, you can restore 150 kilometers of range in 10 minutes, as we just did. Now, the rest of our team is at the Tesla Superchargers, which is where we're meant to be. So that's where we're gonna go now. So what can I tell you from our range test of the Model Y rear wheel drive? Not the world's most perfect range test, not super scientific, didn't pretend that it was. All I can tell you is that from its first factory charge, this Model Y rear wheel drive delivered me 328 kilometers. Now the WLTP rating, is 455. So as you can see, it was some way off what it should do. That being said, I chucked two difficult jobs at it straight away. Firstly, about 120, 130 Ks of suburban driving and some of our photography. And then secondly, a highway drive from our office in Sydney through to Goulburn, which is generally uphill. So you should definitely be able to beat 328 Ks. Now, interestingly, our efficiency was 17.5 kilowatt hours per 100 k's or 175 watt hours per 100 k's now that's higher than the wltp of 13.2 of course but it also implies the usable battery is a little bit smaller than we might have thought 60 kilowatt hours is what people think the usable space of this lfp model y battery is but that consumption and running it down to an indicated zero implies it's 57 and a half kilowatt hours of course though we didn't run it to total exhaustion. And as I found driving a Model 3 with a lithium ion battery, that car could go another 50 Ks or so, even after it said that it would run out. I think we should do a proper exhaustion test on the LFP Model Y, maybe another day. Let me know down below if you'd like to see this done again to conking out on the side of the road and being put on the back of a tow truck, because I don't mind doing it. You let me know your feedback. Hopefully you found that interesting. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. I'll just make a note, it's always nice to turn up to a supercharger even if we didn't quite make it here in the first go because these things just work. You plug them in, you get invoice later, no faffing around. This is why people like Teslas. Anyway, that's my opinion. Let me know yours. While you're down there, hit subscribe and the notification bell. And as always, thank you for watching Chasing Cars.